Who exactly the Witch of Yezu was, or where she came from, is unknown. Apparently, the old, ugly woman was nasty, and because of this, people stayed away from her secluded home on the swamps near Yazu City. Yet, it should be stated that the town known as Yazu City was a relatively new settlement. Located in Yazu County, Mississippi, it was founded in the 1820s when a Choctaw chief called Greenwood Lafleur sold the land to five proprietors who hoped to develop the area into a port town. Originally called Manchester, the men surveyed the land and planned the creation of the future town. Even before anybody lived there, the streets were named and the whole community was divided into numbered lots. Following this, the men started putting adverts in local newspapers. In the ads, it was stated that the lots of the future town of Manchester were to go on sale the 22nd of February, 1830. Around this time, many potential buyers came to the future settlement, most arriving by chartered steamboat. After just two days, the best downtown real estate had already been purchased. Just four years later, the town's construction was underway. All the lots had finally been sold, and it wasn't long until the town had hundreds of homes, various businesses, a bank, and even two hotels. By 1840, the small town of Manchester was shipping 25,000 bales of cotton per annum, and had over a thousand residents. The following year, Manchester's name was changed to Yazoo City, in tribute to the Yazoo River, which was essential for the town's existence. As time passed, the so-called city continued to grow in size and population. It even became the county seat for the Mississippi legislature, and years later, a beautiful new courthouse was erected. It may have been around this time that this mysterious lady moved to the area near the town, as prior to this, there was little infrastructure and surviving would have been seriously hard. Moreover, due to the swampy area, mosquitoes were a huge problem, causing many of the townsfolk to die from yellow fever. Apparently, locals didn't know much about the witch. It's said that she had an evil nature, which made the townsfolk not only fear her, but also hate her. Supposedly, they stayed as far away as possible, to such an extent that they didn't even know her name. By the 1880s, cotton, which was the town's main export, continued to increase, with hundreds of men working in the fields. As the town slowly expanded, a railway was introduced to further facilitate their connection to the rest of the state and the country. However, there was also a considerable number of people who lived off fishing in the nearby river. Yet, during the 1880s, many fishermen who went out on their boats never returned. Local rumours stated that the witch lured these men into her house, providing them with shelter during stormy nights. However, the witch of Yazoo was no good Samaritan. While pretending to aid these men, she would poison them with arsenic and wait for them to die. Following this, the witch is said to have buried the bodies in some woods nearby. Due to the density of the forest and the remote location, she believed that no one would ever find out about her evil ways. As time passed, the townsfolk began to suspect the mysterious witch for being responsible for these disappearances, but of course, there was no evidence, so nothing could be proved. However, this all changed in the autumn of 1884. It was around dusk when a lad called Joe Bob Duggett was on his raft passing by the swampy part of the river, which just so happened to be near the witch's home. While drifting through this area, Joe heard an awful sounding scream coming from the witch's house. Intrigued, he decided to get a closer look, so he made his way to the riverbank, tied up his raft and ran to the house. Once there, Joe peeked through a window, but nothing could prepare him for what he saw. Before Joe's eyes were two lifeless men laying in the living room. He also spotted an old woman slightly further away 
who was looking up towards the ceiling, singing strange, frightening chants while randomly waving her arms in circles. Shocked and fearing for his life, Joe immediately ran to his raft, untied it and made his way back to Yazoo City. Once in town, he found the sheriff and informed him of the terrible things he had seen. The sheriff, accompanied by Joe and his men, made their way as fast as they could to the witch's home. Once there, the group burst through the front door, but the two men that Joe claimed to have seen had seemingly vanished along with the old woman. Of course, this made the sheriff question if Joe had been telling the truth, but after searching the house attic, he was more than convinced of the old lady's evil ways. In the attic, the group found many malnourished cats huddled together, surrounded by fish bones that covered the floor. It was obvious that these cats had been badly mistreated, yet what horrified those present most were the two skeletons dangling from a dusty support beam. Just a few seconds was enough to terrify the sheriff and his deputies, who then closed the door shut. During this time period, around 10 cats rushed out, escaping the attic. The search party believed that the woman had fled, but all of a sudden, she gave herself away when a deputy heard somebody rustling in the leaves next to the house. From the upstairs window, the group finally spotted the old lady, who was sneaking away into the nearby swamp. Joe Duggett later described her appearance as half ghost and half scarecrow, but all witch. The party quickly chased after her, and after a few minutes, they managed to catch up to the maniacal old lady. According to Joe's story, the group found the witch trapped in a patch of quicksand just before her head was about to go under. However, before she was swallowed up, she shouted at the sheriff and his deputies, I shall return. Everybody always hated me here. I will break out of my grave and burn down the whole town on the morning of the 25th of May, 1904. The men tried to save her, but were too late. By the time they managed to retrieve her body, she had passed away. The following day, she was buried in the middle of the town cemetery. The townsfolk were well aware of what she had said the previous night, and decided to wrap the heaviest chain they could find around her grave. Apparently, the sheriff mockingly said, if she can break through that, she deserves to burn down Yazoo. As time passed, the witch who threatened the town was soon forgotten. By the 1900s, Yazoo City had hundreds of buildings, and electricity was widespread, with streetlights burning all night. Furthermore, the population continued to grow, now nearing around 6,000 people. The 25th of May 1904 was like any other normal day in the town, yet it would go down in history as one of the greatest catastrophes to hit Yazoo City. A young lady called Pauline Wise was making preparations for her wedding when she discovered a small fire in her living room. It wasn't long until the blaze got out of hand, spreading to neighbouring houses. As the winds picked up, the fire expanded to many intersecting streets and even various residential areas. Despite this being a popular theory behind the cause of the fire, there was no conclusive evidence. Other locals believed that the fire had actually started due to a little boy playing with matches, which set a house alight. In any case, the fire started to spread through the whole town, engulfing the whole area in flames. Locals fell into disarray, but swift action from the fire department helped them retreat to safety. Yet, despite the firefighters' best efforts, they couldn't stop the inferno. The result was mass devastation. However, the locals noticed something strange about the fire. Witnesses said that they saw the flames jumping through the air. According to them, it appeared as if a supernatural force was at work. Furthermore, the sudden gust came out of nowhere and was very unusual for that time of day. In the end, the fire destroyed over three-fourths of the town, with more than 200 homes and almost every business having been reduced to ash and rubble. The only buildings that survived 
with a new courthouse, a library, an unfinished school, a church, and a few residences. Yet, even though Yazoo City was in ruins, fortunately, not a single life was lost. On the morning of the 26th of May, many older residents made their way to the middle of Glenwood Cemetery where the witch had been buried around 20 years before. What they saw confirmed all suspicion. They noticed that the chain around the witch's grave had somehow been broken in two. This had to mean that the fire was the work of the evil old woman who had cursed the town years ago. Following the fire, locals started to rebuild the town, and it took around two years for Yazoo City to recover. Although the legend of the Witch of Yazoo was well known in the town, it first became famous in Willie Morris's book, Good Old Boy, published in 1971. Today, tour guides tell the witch's story and show tourists around the Glenwood Cemetery. The Witch of Yazoo's original headstone went missing shortly after being placed and was only engraved with the letters TW. Some think this is short for the witch, but others believe it refers to her apparent name, Tandy Warren. Present day law states that when all the chains are gone from the witch's grave, she will return and have her revenge on Yazoo City. To prevent this, the heavy chains that surround the grave are always being repaired. Thank you everyone for watching this video on the Witch of Yazoo. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave me a like and a comment down below. And why not share? If you're new to the channel, why not subscribe? Anyway, I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.